Hey everyone, it's Tom Kradzer with another Rockstar Minute. And this week we want to talk to you about Toronto and maybe give you a few things to think about. We consider ourselves a bit of maybe like a paranoid believer in the Toronto real estate market. Like we believe in buying good properties in good area areas. We're believers in real estate, but we're constantly paranoid. And if you've followed us for any length of time, you know that we're always kind of nervous about what might be happening in the global economy and protecting ourselves. And that's why we're so adamant on buying good properties that pay for themselves and so forth. So this week it was super interesting with when one of the bigger land developers developers in Toronto shared some data points with us that they share with some of the international developers that are looking at Toronto as a place to park some money. And they summarized a few things and I just want to kind of bring it up for you here. They, this is how they talk about Toronto when they're talking to international developers and what international investors think of Toronto. They think of it as, as Canada, first of all, is the best country in the G20 to do business, the most highly educated workforce in the OECD, which is the Economic Cooperation and Development Organization, the lowest business tax tax costs in the G7, the soundest banking system in the world according to the World Economic Forum, and the best quality of life, a life amongst the G20 nations according to the OECD Better Life Index, which is kind of all interesting stuff, but this even gets more interesting because when you boil it all down, all we care about as investors are prices and is this all sustainable and where are we going to buy next and what are we going to do with things. So Sissy, I'm going to ask that you put up this chart here at this point and uh, if you put the price to income ratio chart up, you can see what they do. What they did is they compared Toronto to other world-class cities, other large North American cities, and typically expensive cities. And it's super interesting when you look at this graph and you see the price-to-income ratio. That although we think Toronto is super expensive compared to large parts of the world, it's maybe not quite as expensive, or at least in the eyes of international developers bringing money here, it's not as expensive as you and I might think, or at least we think uh, uh, we may have thought. So, and I want to switch charts. So, Sissy, I'm going to ask you put the, the next chart up here and this is what they did they broke it down to um per square foot apartment prices in the city center outside the city center and mortgages as a percent of income and you'll see on this graph here in these three different sections that Toronto, although it is rather you know expensive, especially to the rest or relative to the rest of Canada, when you look at it on a global scale, maybe there's a little bit of room to move here. When you look at these data points in each of these categories, maybe there is a little more upside than 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 we think of. And I think sometimes we're guilty, and I'm talking about ourselves here at Rockstar, is when we're in this city operating in Toronto and in the Golden Horseshoe, we, you know, you don't see the forest for the trees sometimes. So it's really interesting to us when we see, see how international money evaluates Toronto, and especially when they look at data points like this. And these are rather, rather large groups considering making investments in the Toronto area. So to us, that doesn't mean we can lose sight of any fundamentals. You can't get silly with your investment properties. You know, you, you still need to buy good properties and good areas that pay for themselves and that does get harder and harder every year however what's going to happen to the other outskirt areas of Toronto as immigration continues to be strong and money continues to flow into this area are areas like like we remember Hamilton when you could buy a semi-detached home a good one a large semi-detached home for $195,000 wasn't that long ago you know, we remember Mississauga when you could buy a four bedroom home for like 225,000, wasn't that long ago either. So what happens to prices from this point on when you got immigration and money continuing to flow? So we kind of have to be ready for a financial crisis. You have to be good, um, you know, buy good properties in good areas, but these big long-term trends of money movements and people tend to influence Toronto and can impact areas outside Toronto greatly like Hamilton and like Barrie and like Oshawa and Ajax and Clarington and, and Brantford and, and, uh, and Kitchener. So hopefully that gives you something to think about. Until next time, your life, your terms. Yeah. We're good?